Two years ago, nearly two years ago, we had the pleasure of visiting one of my dearest friends, the infamous Dr. Alec Brown, my adventure companion. This guy has a very, very cool reptile family. And in today's video, we're gonna get to know the animal you hear calling behind me, as well as learn about how Alec has evolved his reptile room, or should I say frog room, over the last few years. Be sure to take a look at the last video so you can have an idea of how he used to keep his animals, what animals he might have been keeping then that he isn't now before proceeding with this one. But let's go right ahead. I'm gonna stop talking. We'll let him introduce himself again and share a few words and get right into the tour. I think that must be the Sylvatica, this one. Mm, I don't hear them as often. I just got them in April this year and they've been pretty quiet until mm, maybe two months ago. I'm Dr. Alec Brown. I'm a veterinarian out of Campus Estates Animal Hospital in Guelph and also reptile and amphibian enthusiast. We're here in my basement, surrounded by a bunch of different vivariums. You might remember my last appearance a couple years ago in the basement were quite a few changes between then and now. Before, I had a few more reptiles, quite a few geckos, and now it's mostly frogs. Still have quite a few Williams eye hatching out almost every week but I've really gone a little bit more deep into the frogs. I just find them better for a few different reasons. I like how active they are. They're almost always jumping around. You can see them, know what they're doing. They're very easy to feed with the fruit flies, almost self-sustaining. And then they're, they're so brightly colored, unlike anything else out there. It's a long time coming, getting the room to the way it is now. Most of the frogs here are large obligates, so Uofaga, Histrionica, Sylvatica, and Lemani, Lemani, I don't know. I'm not sure anybody does. I got all of the frogs except for two from Tesoros to Columbia, Jewel of the Rainforest in Columbia, that's the Histrionica and the Lemani. We were on a wait list for a long time. I think it was about a year and a half between reaching out to Ivan down there and actually acquiring the frogs. A lot of ups and downs. I wasn't sure that we'd ever get them into Canada, but here they are and they're doing well. We can see in a little bit more detail, but all of my frogs are laying good eggs and we've got at least one froglet, quite a few tadpoles coming out, which is very exciting for me personally, but I think also Canada because there are maybe five other people that I know of with these large obligates at the moment. We can start over on this wall. The two biggest cages in the room. This one, lots of exciting things. Many springtails and plants. Very exciting come October this year. Okay, so no inhabitants yet. Well, springtails. Oh yes, okay, fair enough. <laughs> and then in this enclosure, we have some of the Lufaga histrionica cacassi. Sometimes I think they might be referred to as anchicaiensis. A bit of a debate right now see them crawling around. These ones are raising at least three tadpoles, maybe some more, but they're always quite active. You can see the male loves to call from this perch up here. And Phil Ramos from the Green Oasis, he made the backgrounds for me. I really like these two in particular because they're, they're just so bold. I can probably go and touch the frogs and they don't really move a lot of the time. All of the frogs that I keep are what we call obligates obligates being obligate egg eaters. The genus Uufaga translates to uu, which is egg, and faga, eater. And they're called that because the tadpoles survive only on unfertilized eggs from the mother. So the mother lays eggs in a bromeliad or in a leaf litter, or in my case, the tadpoles. The male frog fertilizes those eggs. Then after a couple of weeks, they hatch out into tadpoles, and then the frogs transport those tadpoles into a bromeliad axle, and then the female comes and every couple of days or so lays a clutch of unfertilized eggs, and the tadpoles eat those eggs until they morph out a few months later. So it makes them so tricky because if the parents aren't caring for them very well, then the tadpoles don't survive and we can't reproduce them in captivity. It's all on them. We have our Heidi Eye flies here. Just put some Repashi Calcium Plus. I do that on every feeding. We'll give them to the Picasso. As soon as Alec begins tapping the cup to release the flies into the enclosure, his frogs recognize the sound as feeding time and eagerly make their way down to the bottom of their vivarium to feed. Who would have thought that a beautiful little frog from Colombia could be classically conditioned to associate a sound with the offering of food? It's quite remarkable.
Moving on, we've got our Ufaga Limani. You mean Limani? I think it's Limani. The yeah. guy's name, I think, is Lehman. All right. So we're calling him Lehmanai for now. <laughs> we have the red form here. They look pretty orange. I think that's something to do with how they're kept in captivity. Very curious if we can get them more red. Maybe carotenoids, UVB lighting. Who knows, but I'll be looking into it. I got the two adults just under a year ago now, and they came looking as they look now. But the froglet that's out of water now is significantly more red. Don't know why that's the case. Maybe what we're feeding them, maybe the UVB lighting, really don't know, but it's interesting. Here you can compare the adult to their offspring and really see that difference in color pigment. And then here's another cage of the Histrionica Picassi, with 2.2 in total. I just love these guys because they're so bold. They always come out to be fed, they perch and bask and call for me right away, almost no matter what. I originally got 1.1 sexed and then I planned to get another 0.0.2 unsexed just in case something happened to the first two because there are, I think, no other Histrionica Picassi in Canada and it takes so long to get them. So I got them as backup, but now they're all doing great, which is really good news. And I got really lucky that it was two pairs from Ivan. Coolest frogs, truly my favorite in the room for sure. The Picassi are huge. Alec actually mentioned that they are, as far as we know, the largest large obligates. Moving on again, we've got the Almirante. I had those, I think, when you were here the last time. Previously, I had 1.1, now there's 1.2, one male and two female. And right now, I think I have two to four froglets in there, but you'd never know. They're always so hidden, there's so much foliage in there. I don't see them for weeks a lot of the time. He is the most loud frog by far. He is the loudest and the most frequent caller, more than all of the others combined. Just this one male in here. And what's his name? His name is Dustin. This is Michaela. She's quite big, I know. I don't feel like I feed them that much. I think there are quite a few springtails in there. She is ready to lay some eggs, so I think that's partly contributing, but she's on a diet. Here we have the Ufaga sylvatica, pata blanca, the whitefoot. These are from Ecuador. We got them from Wakiri this year. When I first got them, they were pretty shy. They didn't move around very much for weeks, and then slowly they started coming out a bit more, and now they're pretty bold. Not quite as bold as the histrionica that I have, but they're also in the bottom of the rack, so that could contribute. I really like their white feet, and when they're in the wild and red, they're quite red. So another case that we're hoping to get them a little bit more red in captivity. I think it's interesting to have at least some representation of all of the large obligates as well. In all of the large obligate cages, I have these tadpoles. You can buy them from the Tadpool Project. I think Jungle Jewel in Canada distributes them as well. I find them to be quite successful. The Histrionica and the Lamani and the Sylvatica have all laid eggs in there, and I think we have some right now. They're developing. I think they might have gone bad, but we'll take a look. These little inserts make it quite easy to have a, a look at them in person. For today's question of the day, which is your favorite large obligate dart frog? You can leave a note and Diane will reply to your question and give it a heart. We look forward to seeing your responses. I've moved the Williams Eye upstairs. We've got one male and two females in here right now, laying eggs like crazy, typically two every three weeks or so from both parents and then I incubate them downstairs and grow out the hatchlings down there as well. This is the incubator. I think it works a lot better here upstairs because the, the heating and the lighting and the, the misting is a very different schedule for these guys compared to the frogs and the hatchlings. So we can kind of separate into two different climate zones. Here we have the hatchling William's eye. I have six cages and I keep a clutch in each cage, so typically two geckos per cage. They're doing great. I've moved them around a little bit and found at the top rack 
the way they are right now. Everything is going excellent. I haven't lost a, a baby in months now, and so I'm very happy with, with everything the way it is. Okay, historically, when you were here two years ago, I had another pair of Williams Eye and a trio of Clemeri. I saw the Clemeri were coming into Canada like crazy. There were imports all over the place, so I decided to, to move away from them and more into the frogs. Then the Williams Eye just made sense to have the one cage upstairs for space and for like the number of eggs. A few of the people that I've sold to are now having great success, so we have quite a few Williams Eye in Ontario and Canada at the moment, so I felt less of a need to continue breeding as many as I was. Still obviously have a whole bunch, right now I have 10, two more hatching probably this week or next week, but a few changes, but I like how everything's going at the moment. Last time you were here, I had the hatchling Williams Eye in the acrylic cages. They worked pretty well, they were pretty affordable, but they weren't as waterproof as I wanted, especially given everything's on a mister and getting pretty heavy misting at the moment. So I switched them over to these Exoterra Nanos and I like them quite a bit. They needed a, a couple modifications to make sure they couldn't squeeze through the gaps, like siliconing the, the wire tray at the back and also the little corners on the front and the door, but they've been working excellent for me now and I'm very happy with them. All of the tanks, of course, are planted with live plants. Most of them I got from Mark Pepper at Understory Enterprises. We ordered the Wikiri shipments through him as well, so that's where the Sylvatica came from. So big thanks to Mark Pepper from Understory, and of course Phil from the Green Oasis for the backgrounds, and Ivan at Soros to Columbia. Well everyone, there you have it. I want to take a moment to sincerely thank my friend Alec here for giving us an updated tour on his incredible collection of animals. This was uh, quite a treat. It's always a pleasure to come and see your setup and wow, man. These ovariums are beautiful. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's been a fun afternoon and hopefully it gets some more people interested in the large obligates in Canada. Absolutely. And it certainly has because people, I've been convinced <laughs> to take the full one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All jokes aside, there is a species of large obligate that I have been dreaming of owning for a very long time. And by the frog gods, it has become available as a 1.1 pair, just in the nick of time, for an upcoming Tesoros de Colombia import that we are anticipating soon. But I will not reveal it just yet. You'll have to wait and see. If you're a patron over on Patreon, you can check out more information down below to see. But I will be revealing the frogs that I have coming in on this import soon. So stay tuned for that. Getting to come here today has just got me so hyped. So thank you again, my friend. Thanks for coming along. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed having a look at all the frogs and the geckos here. If you haven't seen the other video of the basement a few years ago, you can check out the link in the description and up there. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Come on! <laughs> okay.